Welcome to another of our ongoing series of videos on domes. This one is focusing on constructing radial and lamella small circle domes. And I've used the word diagrid also to describe a so-called lamella dome. The uh, technical terms for these things tend to be rather interchangeable. And I think the important thing is to get across the concept of the dome um, and the language will take care of itself. In constructing this, we're going to use a piece of software called Multiframe. Um, I tend to use Multiframe for geometric studies of this sort because it also allows me to put loads on the structure and analyze the structure. And it's particularly well suited to the kinds of explorations that we're going to be doing on domes. So I'm going to begin by constructing a radial dome and to do so I'm going to pick this feature right here which is called Generate Arc. And uh, this arc can be centered around whatever point we like but we're going to pick X and Y both as zero so that the center of the dome is at the origin. In this case we're going to put in a radius of 10 feet we often do structures or, or geometric studies like this with a radius of one foot um, so that we have a unity radius and then everything is measured relative to that. In this case though I'm going to put it at 10 feet and the reason is that I would like to represent the parts and pieces of this dome at some point uh, with actual members so if I have a a two inch uh, piece of pipe and I have a one inch or one foot radius to my dome that two inch piece of pipe is going to look enormous and fat so uh, I'm not going to put that there. It's not too crucial that uh, we even specify what this is um, in, in the beginning stages because we can always scale this in any way that we want to. But for right now, we're going to just start with a radius of 10 feet. And we're going to remember that we did that. And we're going to sweep this arc through 90 degrees from 0 to 90. And to keep it simple, I'm just going to go with the default number here of 6. But I can make this 2, 4, 6, 50, whatever I want it to be. The more segments I have, the more computation that's going to be required to do any kind of analysis, but that's really not crucial with modern computers. Um, we're going to do six because that's a nice number for demonstrating various things that we're going to explore along the way. So I'm going to click OK, and we now have six equal segments uh, that are tracing out an arc from the zenith at the top here which has a, an X location of 0, a Y location of 10 feet, and a Z location of 0. And then we come down here and we have X equals 10 and Y and Z equal to 0. And each of these segments are of identical length. Now when I click on that, I get 2.611 inches feet rather and when I click on this I get the same length of 2.611 uh, and I'm just doing that to point out that all of these members are identical. In general in designing domes we would really like to keep those members as close to identical as, as possible. The mode that I'm going to construct this in may not be optimal in terms of reducing the number of different member lengths but the member lengths are going to be close and it's a simple construction technique and uh, if we want to get more sophisticated and we really want to build a dome and we want to minimize the number of different types of parts and pieces we can talk about other ways in which this will be uh, broken down so you might find generative tools which will approach this slightly differently, but for the moment we're just going to make all these members equal. Now we would like to sweep out this uh, radial line all the way around the dome to create the dome, but rather than do the entire dome to begin with, I'm going to um, construct a wedge of this dome and then I'm going to replicate that wedge around. Um, 
and by the way, I've taken my 90 degrees and divided it by a 6 here, so when I sweep it 360 degrees, I want to divide it by 24. So I could actually just show you what that looks like. Um, I'll say duplicate, and I have a choice between linear and cylindrical. Cylindrical involves rotation around Y, and uh, I basically, on my previous arc, I made everything uh, a 15 degree increment from the zenith down to the horizon plane. Uh, that was 90 degrees divided by 6, which is 15 degrees, so I'm going to do the same on the horizontal. So at least at the base of this dome, the spacing will be identical. Now there are a lot of reasons why we might decide that's not exactly optimal, but right now we're just trying to get across the concept of what a radial dome is and how we might go about constructing it. So uh, I'm going to do one of these and I'm going to click OK. Now I could have done 24 of them and gone all the way around, or actually I would have wanted to, yes, I would have wanted to do 24. Um, but I'm not going to do that yet because I'm going to construct other parts and then I'm going to replicate everything at once. So I'm going to uh, put a member across there. And this is not the most efficient way to do this, but I want to get across a point. Whoops. So these are the members that are going to start tracing out the small circles in this radial dome. So the radial dome consists of members on meridians, which are great circles running from the zenith down to the base, and then we're going to have a series of small circles that get swept out. Now, if these radial members and the horizontal members that we've attached to them are properly moment connected to each other, we can get effectively rigid frame action and resisting buckling. The members would have to be a bit heavier in order to do that. So uh, in, in a previous example, we showed um, a radial dome at the uh, North Carolina Zoo for the Arid Environments exhibition and what they did in that case was they cross braced these bays with tension members that did something like this and I just drew the one at the base there there may or may not be a member there. It might just be heavy footings that keep the structure from splaying apart. So for the moment, I'll just remove that just in case. So I'm going to uh, select all the uh, member slopes that are horizontal, and I'm going to give those some kind of uh, section which I think I'll take as an HSS round for the moment. I'm just going to say those members may not be terribly heavy, so I'm going to make them something like a 1.9 by a 0.145 wall thickness. And those are in inches. And then I'm going to come and I should have selected all of these before I did this operation, before I put in the diagonals. Um, I should have given sizes or, or sections because then I wouldn't have to go through this selection process, but it's pretty simple. So again, I'm going to go to HSS round and I'm going to pick, uh, something like that member. And then there, here's a trick for selecting members. I'm going to try and analyze it and it'll tell me the members aren't size. So. I'm going to go see if I have my sections library where I have rod, and I don't. So, apparently I didn't load up that section, but what I'm going to do here just to sort of give this some visual quality is I'm going to make it a pretty small pipe. And now I can kind of look at what that would look like rendered and that's just to uh, help me visualize things but generally speaking I'm not going to use that. Now I'm going to then erase the following things. 
I need, by the way, 24 of these things. And by the way, the reason I'm getting, I'm erasing these is because I want to duplicate whatever's left 24 times. And after I've done that, these members will arrive right here. And the program will say, you cannot duplicate members on top of other members. Um, you could do this in an AutoCAD or some other kind of CAD program, but you can't do it in a program like multi-frame because it makes no sense to multi-frame that two members are sharing the same location in space. And so it simply won't allow you to do that. So I'm going to delete those. I'm going to select all. I'm going to go duplicate. And again, I'm going to do a cylindrical. I'm going to do it every 15 degrees, except now I'm going to do it 24 times. And it says you cannot copy members on top of members. So 36 divided by 15 is 24. This is, by the way, one of the places I often confuse myself. So I'm going to duplicate this 23 times. I guess that's correct. It's only 23, of course, because I need 24 sectors and I've already got one. So I'm going to put 23 here. And that is my radial dome. So this looks a whole lot like um, the, I'm going to go find that dome from, so this is the dome, the radial dome um, for the arid exhibit at the North Carolina Zoo in Ashboro. And again, this is what it looks like inside and you'll notice they didn't cross brace it quite as much as I've shown in the other one. So I'll go back and, and clarify the distant difference. Uh, all these members are working in tension, um, but the crossing is across a double square instead of crisscrossing within a single one. Um, in fact, I don't really need to change that. I think that when you look at this, you'll understand uh, what you need to do to uh, make that happen. So one of the things we mentioned is that the, a problem with this geometry, there are two things about it that bother people. One is we get this huge knot of material up near the top because all these members are converging basically on a single point. A second objection that some people have is that these radial members are working in compression under gravity load up near the top these small circles are also working in compression. Down lower, we're ending up with tension in these small circles, but these, these tension members, the diagonal members, are really not doing anything except under wind load, or they may be providing stabilization uh, to keep these radial compression members from buckling from side to side. So this member wants to either go that way or that way, the adjacent members are perfectly happy to buckle in the same direction. So no matter which way they try to move, there's either these tension members or those tension members that are helping to restrain that. So, uh, one objection to this system is the number of members. Um, and the other objection is that these bracing members aren't really working for us. Uh, under pure gravity load. So one of the things that we can do is we can go eliminate some of these. And I'm going to eliminate ones that are all going in the same direction. And this is going to seem a little bizarre to you at first but it will become apparent what I'm doing after I've done a little bit of that. And now on this level I'm going to eliminate all of these.
So, I'm reducing the number of members, but in addition to that, I'm going to put the members that are there to more consistently participate in the load bearing process. And what I'm going to create is what I'm going to call a diagrid dome. And that has not historically been a common terminology, but it certainly uh, should be now in the light of the number of times we hear diagrids uh, described uh, in tall buildings. So now I'm going to take this and I'm going to rotate it. So I'm going to go to geometry and I'm going to say rotate and I'm allowed to pick a point about which I rotate. So in this case the default point is the origin and that's the one I want to use. And then about the z-axis, I mean, excuse me, we can rotate about an x-axis, a z-axis, or a y-axis. Y is the vertical axis, again, I remind you in this program, for historical reasons, the original analysis software was developed for two dimensions. Y was up and X was the horizontal component, and then when they made it into a 3D program, Z became the other horizontal component. So Y is the vertical component, and I want to rotate this by 7.5 degrees, which is half of the 15 feet. So now you're beginning to see the essence of what we call a lamella dome. And we're going to continue that process on up to the top. But to assist us, I'm going to do the following. I'm going to go view, clipping. And this is just to reduce the visual clutter so that I can work better. And I'm going to say clip to the window and now I'm going to come up from the bottom if I can make this thing work. And now it makes those members not active and right now they're grayed out. And then I'm going to say uh, clip invisible. So now all I've done is I've made my life a bit easier um, in terms of seeing what I'm going after here. And whoa. Okay, so now this, uh, this tells us, by the way, we've got something. Um, I could, this program, by the way, the computational core of this program is absolutely rock solid. It has never failed in uh, thousands of tests that I've made, but sometimes the graphic interface is a little glitchy. So I'm going to say no clipping, and I'm going to try another technique here, which is I'm going to go back to this view. I'm going to lasso all that, and I'm going to say mask to the selection, and um, now I can see the parts that I want to see. And by the way, whenever you have screw-ups with the clipping function or the masking function, just close, save your file. It has nothing to do with your file. It has to do with the malfunction of that graphic feature of the software. So you close your file and reopen the file and everything will work fine. All right, so I'm removing a whole set of these. And by the way, when you do this, you have to hold down the shift key. And if you inadvertently left, left, let up on it when you're clicking, you have to start over. So stay focused in holding your shift key down.
So I'm going to delete all of those. I think in this case I have to uh, rotate that minus 7.5 because of the way I did that, but I'll check in a second. Okay, so that's good. So now I've got, uh, I'm going to say unmask just so we can see what we're doing. No masking. So now we're beginning to see how the structure is working. Now I'm going to go look at the top two bays. And I'm going to mask to the selection. And I wish I knew a good way. There are a lot of really efficient ways to um, hmm. to select things. Uh, I don't know a really good efficient way to lasso all of these. So now I want to take those points I'll select that cir circle and I'm going to say rotate and I think it's minus 7.5 so now I have a complete lamella or die grid dome so the characteristic of this dome, by the way, is all the members are working um, under full gravity load. And in fact, in any given level like this, all those members are sharing the load equally, any given band. So first of all, I'm going to get rid of the masking. Second of all, I'm going to go to a side view. And I'm going to lasso all of these because these are no longer tension and compression or uh, bracing or whatever. They are all sharing equally in the load. So they should all be the same size member and the same color. So now the dome looks something like this. And let's just mem make sure all those members are the same. So, the dome looks something like this, and you'll notice that the horizontal members are about equal to the slope members in length down here, but as you go up, you get to smaller and smaller circles, and but we still have the same number of subdivisions. We have 24 members creating this uh, small circle, and 24 members creating that one so the angles are becoming extreme and we have this knot of members at the top so it's very similar uh, to this dome where we have huge numbers of radial members coming together at the top except that now we don't have radial members and bracing members we have all the members participating uh, in carrying gravity load. So any load at the top gets shared between those members, which gets shared between these members, and so forth, all the way down to the foundation of this dome. So again, this is sometimes called a lamella dome, and one of the reasons for that, by the way, in a lamella structure, we tend to go a bay here, 
I mean two bays with a member, two bays with a member, so the continuity of these members across that joint is a, is a part of the idea of the dome and we want to make sure that this member more or less aligns with that one and that one and that one and so forth. Um, but I prefer the, the expression diagrid in a high-rise diagrid these days you have no vertical columns all the columns are sloped just like these members are splayed apart to carry the compression down to the ground so again the lamella structure is regarded in some ways as more efficient than the radial dome although it's also a lot harder to make because in the case of the radial dome we have absolute continuity of these radial members going down so it's it's hard to imagine a dome that's easier to make uh, than a radial dome but it does have the inefficiency that it has a lot of bracing members we have a similar kind of debate in high-rise buildings. A lot of people say, well, it's easy to put in a bunch of continuous straight columns and then provide some bracing, whereas the diagrid people say, well, if you can figure out the jointery, then it's worth your while because the structure is going to behave more efficiently because you don't have pure bracing members. Every, every member in the structure has a function under gravity load. So, that concludes our video on constructing radial and lamella or diagrid small circle domes.